Coming up on today's Locked On Senators, it's game day. The Philadelphia Flyers are in town to take on the Ottawa Senators in what will be the NHL debut of Tyler Clevin. The K train is the sixth Sens player from the 2020 draft to play in the NHL. So you know Ryan Reynolds had to make his way to the CTC to watch it in person. We've got more than just the Remington group taking into tonight's game. More potential owners will be there. And the Sens got a win last time. So can they make it two in a row? We'll take a look at the standings and what could be if they do get two points. This is the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Welcome inside episode 767 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, please like and subscribe wherever you download your podcast. Locked On Senators is free and available five days a week, and we'll see it tonight in the postcast. Today is Thursday, March 30th, and Pillsy, the K-Train NHL debut, it's a big day for the brand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. We've been very excited about Tyler Clevin for years now. He's been a guest on this show. We've been following the Nodak Sens. Ross has his Nodak uh, sweater on right now. So for number 43 to be playing in an Ottawa Senators jersey, it's been a long time coming, buddy. Here we go. He'll be paired with Nick Holden, who seems to be the um, what do you call it? The receptionist when you get a new defenseman in town? He was paired with Jacob Chikrin right away, and now he'll be paired with Tyler Clevin. And you're just looking for him to play a simple game tonight, right off the glass and out. If you can make a big hit, go for it. But otherwise, just keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even go for a massive hit. Play physical, because if you, if you make that big hit and you take yourself out of the play... DJ Smith's probably not going to be a huge fan of that, although he does like his uh, physical, uh, tough, enforcing players. But I just think if you're Tyler Clevin, you just try to not have any big mistakes. As a young defenseman, your first game, there's a lot of attention on you. The, it, the bright lights are there. There's ownership in the crowd. It's at home, or potential ownership, I should say. So this is a big game for Tyler Clevin. I'm not expecting anything crazy, Ross, but... I would like to see him kind of impose his will physically, whether it's through hits, playing hard up against uh, the boards, in the corners, all those kinds of things. Let's see what he can do at the pro level. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not saying that this is going to be uh, an NHL-only experience in pro hockey for Tyler Clevin. I think there's a good chance he plays in Belleville next season. But right now, get your feet wet. Get in there. Play a game. It's going to be a packed crowd, I think, tonight at the CTC. We know the important faces that are going to be there. The Nico Sparks group will be there. The Remington group will be there, including Ryan Reynolds, who has already posted a picture with his, quote, Ottawa friends, which happens to include the mayor of Ottawa in Mark Sutcliffe. So Ryan Reynolds is in town, and the last time he was there, the Vancouver Canucks got a 6-2 win. So you got to be better than that. There's no question. And you got to be better than how they played against Florida, especially at five on five Pillsy. Before we get to what they need to do today, I got to rewind to yesterday, right after we recorded, we saw that Keith Kachuk went on first up on uh, TSN 1050 radio. Did you hear him straight up call the Florida Panthers a soft team? No, no, I missed that. <laughs> he said, yeah, they're soft. Uh, I watched Ottawa play a lot this year. They might not be the most skilled team, but maybe Florida should take a page out of their book, how they play. I mean, fair, they beat down the Florida Panthers 5-2 in that game when uh, the 5-on-5 five -five play was not great for the Sens. So, fair point, Walt. Yeah, no question. I, I just found it funny that he straight up said it. Like, usually, and then he went on to say, like, Sam Bennett's missing piece of that team right now, out with injury. And, Big time. Wow, cheering for the Leafs was awful last night. That That's the full Leafs experience. Like, get up, feel good about yourself, get cocky online, and then all of a sudden, blow it in the final minute, lose in overtime. Yeah, I mean, it really is the script for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And uh, this is why we do not 
normally cheer for the Toronto Maple Leafs unless it has positive implications for your Ottawa Senators because ultimately it leads to disappointment. But I'm not getting my hopes up anymore. Like, I'm not tweeting out, Sens fans tonight with a photo of CeCe and Spezza in a Leafs jersey, right? Like, I, I can't do that anymore. Even though on April 10th, we might be cheering for them again when they play the Florida Panthers once more. But the good news is that the Leafs will not be playing against a team that matters for us to cheer for Toronto again. Their next game actually happens to be in Ottawa this Saturday. So you get all your Leafs hatred in on that one. We don't know what the lineup or starting goalie will be for that one. But this morning, Pilsy, Cam Talbot was in the starter's end. We were under the impression that he was going to be okay to back up tonight, was I think what he yeah. said on Monday. But he also said Ridley Gregg was out for the year, and there he was uh, practicing on the top line with a contact jersey yesterday. Still not cleared, but uh, I do think it's going to be Cam Talbot tonight. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it points to that, but with with DJ Smith, um, he, he's going to keep this one close to the chest, so no one knows whether it's going to be Talbot or Sogard, but... I, I'm not really too upset either way. I, I think it would be better to get Sogard in this game just because he's been really good lately and give Talbot an, uh, an extra day off to kind of keep recovering for that back-to-back coming up this weekend. But I think either goalie gives you a good chance to win here. We'll see how Talbot looks if he is indeed the starter. Yes, 100%. I've got, uh, I've got that kind of penciled in. And when you look, at the out-of-town scoreboard, or sorry, not out-of-town, sorry. When you look at the scoreboard throughout the season, he's actually played really well against Philly. A one and one record. He's played both games against the Flyers this season and has a 955 save percentage and has only allowed two even-strength goals in those two games. So, you know what? If you want to go with Camp Talbot, a little revenge against the team he played, what, five games for? <laughs> I actually, I mentioned that yesterday, but I actually want four games he played. Yeah, for it's the, hardly uh, any. Three starts, four games. Uh, but there are a lot of former Flyers on the Senators. We know Claude Giroux, six points away from 1,000. Also, Derek Broussard, who's played for every team in the National Hockey League. And Patrick Brown. So, lots of former Flyers on this Ottawa Senators team. But um, Tyler Clevin certainly plays Flyer brand of hockey. And I'm hoping to see that out of him tonight. We'll get to a locked-on player. We'll get to all that coming up a little bit later. We've got more to hit on when it comes to the scoreboard standings situation who are you cheering for tonight i'll tell you it's another big game against the pittsburgh penguins that's all coming up next you're listening to locked on senators today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at built bar it's the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar and that's why i love built bar they figure out how to make their bars taste good and then how to make them healthy perfect example is the built puffs Ross, we love all the Built Puff flavors because it's uh, marshmallow covered in chocolate. It's basically two of the three ingredients of a s'more, and you're thinking that can't be healthy. No way. Well, it's a protein-infused marshmallow. That makes the bars high in protein, high in fiber, but low in calories and low in sugar. you got to check out the website at Built.com. They have so many great flavors from chocolate cookie dough to brownie to coconut almond, churro, whatever you're into, you can find a flavor you like. And we recommend getting the mixed box so you can try all the different flavors Built Bar has to offer. So go to their website today, Built.com, and use our promo code. We're hooking you guys up. Promo code locked on 15 for 15% off your next order. Once more, guys, go to Built.com. Use promo code locked on 15 for 15% off your next order. It's Built Bar, the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. Today's episode is also brought to you by the Glebe Central Pub. You know how much we love our friends at the Glebe Central Pub. So much so that we'll see you there next weekend. The Glebe Central Pub, 779 Bank Street. And when you head there, make sure you let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. Not only at the Glebe Central Pub, but head to their website. It's very simple to navigate the Sens bus, one of the top links at the top. <laughs> top links at the top. Come on! Have I been indulging in those wonderful Guinnesses that you can get every Friday at the Glebe Central Pub for under $8? Maybe. Maybe <laughs> not, because it's 10 o'clock in the morning. But I will tell you that the Philadelphia Flyers, there's a shuttle tonight for that game. $15 gets you a round trip. They've got the game Saturday as well. Also, next Saturday against Tampa and the following Monday against Carolina. They got all the games, Ross. All the home games they got. Well, why wouldn't they? It's the Glebe Central Pub, the number one spot to go check out the, the game for a game at the pub or go take the shuttle to and from the game. Only $15 round trip. It's a deal that you really just can't beat. 
when you're looking at round trip for that. Go get a plate of nachos on your way in. Get the quesadilla. I know Pilsy is a big, big fan. Of the pickled eggs. He's also just a big <laughs> fan of food in general. So oh, yeah. you'll, you'll eat whatever's put in front of you, Pilsy. Not me, though. No no honey garlic for me. Just hot and honey at the Cleve Central Pub. Yeah, I, I made that mistake ordering you the wrong kind of wings. But, Ross, you were still pleasantly surprised. I certainly was because the Cleve Central Pub knows what they're doing, and you can go find out yourself. Go see them at 779 Bank Street. And when you do, make sure you let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. It's the Glebe Central Pub. Go see them, 779 Bank Street, and let them know Locked On Sends sent you. All right, Pilsy. As we said, it's a big day for the brand. As we welcome the K-Train back from North Dakota to the NHL. Brad Schlossman had a great article depicting Clevin's kind of journey, legacy, whatnot. If you like that in audio or visual format, go check out last Friday's Locked On Senators. We've had lots of K-Train coverage over the years. If you type in Alex Heinert, our interview with him, Jake Brandt, all of our NODAC connections. We've had a great time getting to know Tyler Clevin tonight. What's your guess or best estimate for minutes played by Tyler Clevin tonight? I'm gonna go 1437. Okay, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say 1650. You think he gets any penalty killing time? No, I don't think so. I just look and they're thin, right? Yeah. They're thin right now in the back end. I think I think he might slide in there at some point. Maybe not in the first period, but I think he might at some point. Yeah, I mean, hopefully the Sens are disciplined and uh, they're not allowing too many opportunities for him to get there on the penalty kill, but it could happen. Yeah. We'll have a full rundown of that tomorrow. Also tomorrow on Locked On Senators, Jamie McLennan, Noodles from TSN, will join us. We're looking forward to a fun conversation with him. Haven't had him on in a little while, so really excited. Lots to catch up on with Noodles and We'll definitely get in to not only Tyler Clevin, but what he thinks of Mad Sogard being a goalie hugger himself. We'll get to kind of the lay of the land. And if he thinks that these extra 15, 20 games, whatever Sogard ends up playing, will be beneficial down the road. Or if he thinks that, you know what, maybe he does still need a little bit more AHL time next season. That'll all be tomorrow on Locked On Senators. But it's game day. And not only is it game day, Pilsy, the Ottawa Senators have not played against Brendan Lemieux since he got suspended for five games for biting Brady Kachuk. Do you think there will be any form of retribution for that fateful night last season? Uh, Yeah, I think there might be. Anytime uh, you get bit by someone, that uh, tends to stick in your mind. Uh, If any of you are watching the Last of Us series, you know getting bit by someone is a dangerous thing to happen. And Anyone that's out there biting Ross, safe to say they're a bad teammate, bad guy. I don't even know what he's thinking. He's just a complete brickhead. He's got nothing up there. Bad bad guy, bad player, but what a joke he is. One of the most all-time infamous, famous quotes from Brady Kachuk. I just hope it's not Brady Kachuk. Thank you. Let's go do it for himself. This seems like a job for Austin Watson. Yeah, or Mark Kastlick, or uh, I mean, even There's Hammer out there. I was going to say, yeah, Travis Hamnick. Has he had any fights this year? I don't know. I know that he's had fights in the past of his career. Has he fought this year? His last fight was against Brock McGinn this season, yes. Okay. On, uh, January 20th. Or maybe uh, Artem Zub even mixed in a fight this ah. season, Ross. Maybe oh, that yeah. could happen. I forgot that Hamannick fought Brady Kachuk in the COVID year. Whoa, so did I. He also fought Nick Paul. Hey, his last three fights were all against hashtag Sends Abroad. That's and hilarious. Four, four of his last five fights. He fought Alex Chason. <laughs> he fought Nick Paul, Brady Kachuk, and Eric Branson. Wow. Different levels of toughness throughout that. And Hammer and Goody. That must have been a good tilt. Yeah, only one fight with the Ottawa Senators, though. It was against Brock McGinn. Let's see. Obviously, all fight information is courtesy of uh, of HockeyFights.com. Hockey yeah. um, they've given Travis Hamnick 16 
out of 27 votes have the win and the other 11 are a draw. So did okay. well for himself. Hey, tell me you, you read that article that Ian did. Uh, oh, Ian, yeah. I read all of Ian's articles. But that one today, that was just music to my ears with what's been going on social media the last couple of days with my Travis Hamnick defending. But I, I, th- I just think it was great. He played with a cracked Adam's apple that game in New York. That's insane. Like I could, like he mentions in the article, I didn't even know that was a thing. And then for them to be like, oh yeah, that, uh, again, Brandon Pillar, not a doctor, but that thing in your throat, yeah, it's cracked, but get out there. Come on, let's go. <laughs> like 13 minutes later. Oh man. Well, and you remember the play where, where it happened? It was so frustrating because the shot goes off his Adam's apple. And then I forget who the player was, a New York Ranger just shoots the puck in the net and it's a good goal. Yeah. And then didn't Zoo get hit in the face right after? Yeah. Broke his jaw. Yeah. That was a costly win, but it was still a win. That was Brady Kachuk doing captain shit in overtime, tying the game late and then winning it in OT. And not to mention fighting Jacob Truba center ice at Madison Square Garden. My God. On a Friday night, we've heard of Ali Fraser, but how about. The Chuck Truba center ice. No, all jokes aside, I would recommend everybody, if you don't even have an athletic subscription, this article is worth a month price. It's so good, uh, so detailed. And Travis Hamnick wants to be in Ottawa. And of course, we'll have plenty of summer to discuss. And we had a couple of really fair YouTube comments yesterday where it's like, I don't know where we're, we're getting all this like fictional money. Pilsy, we're so used to just being like, oh, you sign him for this, you sign him for that value. This summer, I feel like one of the first shows after we like put the final scoop of, of dirt on top of the Sens coffin of the season, we're going to have to do like a full cap rundown of where the Sens are because no longer is it just kind of free space that you can work with and figure out. The Sens, I think, going into next season could be pretty close up against the salary cap. Yeah, that'll be a great episode, Ross. Two not math guys trying to crunch numbers uh, fictionally and uh, for the future. We'll see how that goes. But, dude. So you're an expert. (laughs) Yes, we are experts. I warned you about this a couple months ago when we were talking about the Debrinka contract. You were... You were tossing out fun coupons. There was no salary cap. You were you were heavy spending. And I said, Ross, I took a look at the numbers and I started doing uh, the math in the future. And again, take that for what it's worth, me doing math. Um, but it's going to be tight here, especially with goaltending. Like there's not a lot of money left over for a starting or a 1A goalie. So this is going to be a thrilling offseason and I don't know. This is something that we can get into, but maybe, and this is a weird spin zone to take. I'll probably get torched for it, but maybe it's a positive that Debrinket had a down year because maybe this allows you to be able to squeeze him into the budget, whether you're going short term or long term. Because if he hits forty goals again, geez, it would be it would be astronomical the the amount of money he would be asking for and would be worth. So maybe it's a good thing. Well, look out, Alex Dabrinkit with uh, three goals and an assist in his last three games, four points over that stretch. And yeah, despite it being a down year, still 60 points. Not I that. know, that's the thing. I was looking at that today, Ross. I was like, everyone's like, man, down year, bad year for Dabrinkit. 60 points and uh, he's going to get 25 plus goals. Like, not, not too shabby. Yeah, not bad at all. Now, something very interesting about uh, about Alex Dabrinkit's play this season. Against the Eastern Conference, he has 32 points in 42 games, minus six. Against the West, he's got more points per game, 28 and 32. But he's a dash 22 against the Western Conference. Now, I know that, that minus five game against Seattle certainly had Ooh, something to do yeah. with it. That was tough. But all in all, it's interesting. And again, plenty of time this summer to discuss Alex Dabrinkit. I think the theme of today's show, though, is Tyler Clevin's debut. I mean, this guy went from do not draft on Elite Prospects Draft Guide. He was an honorable mention in Scott Wheeler's top 100 for the draft. Couldn't even make top 100. And now here he is, a, quote, single variable defenseman who scored 20 goals in 90 games in college, has a booming slap shot, kills guys down the wall. We retweeted every single time. I put from Sen Central, and then I just put the emoji of the bang and the train next to nice. each other. Yep. I could just scroll for days. So if you want to see 
lots of clips at sense prospects does a great job with that as well. This guy's also come up in big moments. He scored the game winning goal in overtime to win the conference championship of the NCHC, the Penerosa, the Penrose mm-hmm. cup. So this guy, and then do or die back to back games with a goal this spring. So I'm excited to see it. I'm really curious to see how he handles the puck. I think that's going to be the telltale sign of how comfortable he is. I think, being able to to push guys away from the front of the net, pin them up against the boards, be like solid defensively in that sense, I think is going to be, you know, kind of old hat for him, just muscle memory. I think where it's really going to get interesting is his gap control, defending the rush, and how he looks with the puck on his stick. That's what I'm going to be most, not concerned, but most, I'm going to use the most concentration calories watching that tonight. Nice. Love it. Um, and that's the thing, Ross, we mentioned this, like when he's paired with a guy like Nick Holden, it's not like he has that option to just, Hey, I'll go get the puck in the corner. And without even thinking, I'm just sliding it over to Thomas Shabbat. I'm just sliding it over to Jake Sanderson. I'm sliding it over to Eric Branson. Nick Holden's not really that guy. So it's not just an easy automatic decision. Okay. I don't have to deal with carrying the puck up the ice. He might have to do that tonight. And Deferring to Nick Holden to do that every single time is also not the most efficient option either. So it's going to be interesting to see how that pair operates and how the Philadelphia Flyers decide to attack that pair also. Well, how do the Philadelphia Flyers line up? They are winners of four straight games, but they also have way more losses than wins, especially when you take into account 12 overtime and shootout losses this season. Let's Crazy. meet those Flyers, get a lookout player, locked on player, keys to victory, full game day preview coming up next. You're listening to Locked On Senators. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. You guys already know it. They are the number one sports book in North America. They're the trusted sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. And that is where I go to make my wagers on Sens games and so much more. Ross, it's opening day for MLB. So if you guys are uh, Jays fans watching along, they're up against the Cardinals. Get your bets in there. You can do parlays for different sports even, which uh, is a wild move, Ross. But sometimes I like to dip my toe in that. Maybe do a Sens Jays Moneyline parlay. Mix that up a little bit. But that's not all you can do. You can do same game parlays to have a bigger chance at a bigger payout. And if you guys are first uh, customers to FanDuel, even better. Because they have a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. I love it. Simple, safe, secure, easy to use. So go to FanDuel.com slash locked on so you can get a chance at a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. All right, Pillsy, full game day preview coming up soon. But you know what? This isn't even a a sponsored post. I'm just so excited about it, and I want everyone to take advantage of this offer. Farm to Fork is doing a buy one, get one free box of filet mignon. Like, is there a more universally loved cut of steak than a filet mignon? I mean, it's just nice to say even, like, yeah, I'll have a filet mignon. Filet mignon. Practice your en français with one of those. So head over to farm2forkdelivery.ca and they will literally bring you not one, but two. Like, you know the feeling? Like, let's say you're me and you like garlic sauce with your pizza, right? You know that about me, Pelzi. Pizza are just garlic sauce vehicles for you. It's not like that's not even a a thing. It's just a, a way to get garlic sauce into your body. This is very true. And it breaks it up too, which is nice. But imagine you order a pizza you order one garlic sauce and two show up. That's oh, literally what you can do beautiful. at farm 2 fork delivery.ca. You order one box of filet mignon and two show up. This is how you guys know how much Ross loves garlic sauce. He's equally comparing it to filet mignon. <laughs> <laughs> so go to farm to fork delivery.ca and, and why not use promo code sends 40 for $40 off your first purchase. I'm unsure whether that works on the deal. Even if it doesn't, it's a great deal. But then why don't you just use that elsewhere on the same 
order and then you have steak for days and weeks and then all of a sudden you just go to the grocery store and only have to worry about getting your veggies and starch or whatever you like with or don't steak. even worry about sides just have all meat the chicken the chicken way yeah yeah have a, have a steak with some chicken and then a side of uh fresh salmon yeah, why not? You can find all that at farm to fork delivery.ca. All right, Pilsy, important game tonight. Would you say must win? I mean, every game is a must win now. Like the that Ross, I'd say this is more of a can't lose than a must win. Uh, that's fair. No, I, I understand where you're coming from there, but I'm looking at the out of town scoreboard tonight and I'm saying, wow, I want the Sens to win big time, but almost as much. I know we have to do this again. We're cheering for Montreal tonight. But this is kind of a fun part of the season to be cheering for Montreal because all their wins are only taking away from their draft position. True. So I think that's a good spin zone that you could tell yourself. Yep. Get a filet mignon and cheer for the Canadien de Montréal. A little. <laughs> there you go. Um, so we're cheering for that. We're also the biggest Nashville Predators yes. fan of all time. Who should I tweet out a photo of before the game? Should it be Kyle Turris in a National Preds jersey? Oro. Erica Branson. Mike Fisher. David Legwand. I got one more. Uh, my clip, clip's empty. Matt Cullen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. Nice. There we go. That was fun. Nice. Uh, that was... Um, I was just- talking Preds. And I was talking Preds. So, uh, yeah, I'll tweet out a photo of every single one of them. For, for every goal they score, I will tweet out one more. Nice. Ben Harper. Ooh, that's yeah. a good one. That's a good uh, one. Nice. Yeah, my clip's empty now, too. Uh, <laughs> with Nashville Predators. But tonight's opponent is the Philadelphia Flyers. Let's start oh, with... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Matt Duchesne. Come oh, on. Matt Duchesne. Come on. Come on. Oh, right now. Okay. I can't cheat. We These all have to be off the top of the head. I, I think I'm out. Mm, people are gonna people are gonna get us. There's definitely a, did mm. <laughs> Volchenkov ever play for the Preds? Yeah, I think he did. He did 100. percent He did Preds okay, and Devils. So, yes, hell yeah. Okay, we're killing it. Let us know in the comments what hashtag sends abroad Nashville Predators we missed, <laughs> and when they score 12 tonight against Pittsburgh, I will tweet out a photo of every single one. Yeah. Of them. Uh, okay, good stuff. The Philadelphia Flyers, we already mentioned there's a lot of former Flyers on the Ottawa Senators. Can't say the same in terms of former Sens on the Flyers. That's because you're not going to know a lot of these Philadelphia Flyers by name because a lot of them are rookies, are fighting for spots. They seem to have, you know, they've got some injuries too. No Carter Hart tonight. We've got no Travis Konechny. And Pilsy, pick it up there because you told me a wild stat about Travis Konechny. Yeah, I, this is a, a tough year for the Flyers, not for Travis Konechny. Well, I mean, injury aside, but Travis Konechny leads the Philadelphia Flyers in points, which on its own is not a crazy statement. That's fair. 54 points. Okay, not bad. In 52 games, point per game pace. Nice. But to have your leading scorer only played 52 games, 20 less games than the next guy, Kevin Hayes, who has 52 points. Yikes. Big time yikes. Pills, you want to run us through what we expect the Flyers to look like tonight? We've got an asterisk on there because unless they're going 11-7, we're unsure whether or not they're going to have Justin Braun play forward. Um, And they've got a couple injuries that could be game time decisions, but this is what we expect to see from the Flyers tonight. So the top line is Farabee, Cates, and Tippett. Then you got Van Riemsdyk. James with Kevin Hayes and Keeper Bellows and Brady Kachuk's best friend, Brandon Lemieux with Morgan Frost and Allison. Then on the bottom line, we have Nick Delorier with Lawton. And we're not sure if uh, Braun's going to be the seventh defenseman or how they're going to set up there. It's really unfortunate. They're missing out a guy we were really high on in the 20, uh, 2020 draft as well for that late first round pick. Ottawa ultimately goes with Ridley Gregg. This player was off the board a couple picks before, but Tyson Forster yeah. has started his career like gangbusters, but then he got an injury on the end or at the end of the season, and um, and now he's he's missing time. So unfortunately, he won't be there. He's got um, 
he's got seven points in eight games at the NHL level, and, and he's on a bit of a heater right now. So the Sens kind of dodged a bullet in that one. Yeah, we are big Forrester fans, that's for sure. Uh, and then on defense, we got Provrov with York, Sanheim with Ristolainen, and Sealer with D'Angelo. And Carter Hart appears to still be out. So it's either going to be Sandstrom or Erson. Both of these guys very, very new to the NHL. Kind of kind of similar to your uh, Sogard-Mando pair that the Ottawa Senators had a little while ago here. So the Flyers are down bad, and the Ottawa Senators need to take advantage of that, especially at home. But they're up in the clouds with four straight wins. Yeah, true, the true. The Flyers, 29-32-12 and 12 on the season. They're 5-4-1 and one in their last 10 games. Who's your locked-on player? Look out, player. Your lookout player for the Flyers tonight. My lookout player, Ross, is going to be Morgan Frost. And this was a very interesting uh, player because he was a part, like the main part of that Braden Shen trade. And Flyers fans were so stoked. He was an absolute stud in the OHL. As the Flyers do, they kind of rushed him to the NHL a little bit too quickly and didn't really work out for him right away. As when he started in the NHL, well, he had 20 games played and only seven points. So not terrible, but not great either. And then he spent some time in Lehigh Valley. And then this season, Ross, he has 16 goals and 22 assists, good for 38 points in 72 games. And he just scored two goals up against the Montreal Canadiens in their 3-2 win last game. So uh, a bit of an um, ironic term, but Frost is heating up. Oh, my God. Come on. <laughs> Now, my lookout player is a guy who had no points against Montreal, but even including that, he's got six points in his last five games, coinciding with the best stretch of hockey that the Flyers have played this year. It's Noah Cates, and I'm I'm bringing him up not only because he's on a bit of a heater, but also I feel like some Sens fans might be like, wait, who did you just have as the number one center on the Philadelphia Flyers? I've never heard of him. Well, Noah Cates is a younger player. He's 24, but still not like young in terms of hockey years, but young in terms of experience. He's only played 89 career games, had a 16-game audition at the end of his college season last year. He's a University of Minnesota Duluth player, so him and Tyler Clevin might have a little history of their NCHC battles over the last number of years. But he's got 33 points in 73 games this year, averaging just a shade under 18 minutes a game. Now, how can you beat up on Noah Cates when he's on the ice? Well, with most inexperienced players, you take advantage in the face-off circle. Noah Cates is at a 39% success rate when snapping back more than 780 face-offs, more than 880 face-offs this year. But he's a hard-nosed player, does a lot of his work at even strength. I think he's going to be a solid player. Do I think he's going to be a top-line center? No, but hey, with six points his last five games, he's certainly playing at the peak of his career so far, and I'm going to be looking out for him tonight. Yeah, I mean, that's two young centermen right there that you mentioned, Ross, and you talk about the the struggles that he's had in the face-off dot. Well, you can't put it all on Noah Cates because the Philadelphia Flyers are 30th in the league in face-off percentage, 456 percent face-off success rate the Sabres are the worst team and they're at 45.2 so the Flyers are barely better than them so uh, down the middle this is going to be hopefully a uh, massive advantage for the Ottawa Senators let's hope so how will the Ottawa Senators line up tonight well let's take a look right now Tim Stutzla is expected to be between Brady Kachuk and Claude Giroux Giroux missed practice yesterday with a um, just wasn't feeling well, I think was DJ Smith's exact words, but he was back at the morning skate. We expect him to play in his spot tonight. Again, six points away from 1,000. Second line is Shane Pinto between Alex DeBrinkett and Drake Batherson. Then we have Dylan Gambrell between Brassard and Joseph, and Mark Kastelik between Patrick Brown and another former Nashville Predator, Pilsy. How did we miss this one? Austin Watson. Up front oh, there. my God. That's a bad miss by us, Ross. On the fourth line. On defense, it's Jake Sanderson with Artem Zub. It's Erica Brandstrom with Travis Hamanick. And Tyler Clevin, the K train, Tyler Clevin coming in hot with Nick Holden there on the third pair. We expect it to be Cam Talbot starting in goal. Matt Sogard also available. It's game 75 for the Ottawa Senators tonight. Who is your locked on player to watch? My locked on player, Ross, is going to be Eric. Brandstrom. Anytime you're set up with the most offensive uh, defenseman on the team in Travis Hamannick, you're going to be set up for success here. And with no Thomas Shabbat, 
it's a very likely that Eric Branstrom will see an inflated role on the power play. And I know all the Branstrom supporters out there, the brand stands on Sen's Twitter. They'll be quick to bring up his advanced analytics when he's on the power play. They will, they will not be quick to bring up the simple analytics of how many power play points he has. But the, oh, uh, what, what, the, are, what are Hamannick's uh, power play analytics this year? No, that's, that's, one that's, point. That's what I said, Hamnick, the offensive weapon on defense, Ross. Uh, but Brandy's going to get an opportunity here. Just like it seems every year Thomas Shabbat is injured at the end of the season, Ross. So the, the end of the season is Brandy's time to shine. So I really want to see him have success on the power play. I think uh, this is massive for him as he's going into a contract year after a disappointing contract year last, last time around. So I'm going to be locked on to the short king, Eric Branstrom. There's going to be a superstar in the crowd in Ryan Reynolds, but all eyes will be on the superstar down the middle. My locked on player, Tim Stutzla in tonight's game. You you joke at the start. Well, it's serious, but kind of joking because two of them have one game played, but the Ottawa Senators have six players from the 2020 draft with NHL games and none better than Tim Stutzla, who leads all draft picks from that season in points by nearly double. But right now he is in one of the hottest stretches of the season. Now he even has two games, three games rather, without a point in his last 16. So he has points in 13 of his last 16 games. And over that stretch, and this is all right after going three straight games without a point. He has 23 points in 16 games, 10 goals over that stretch. He's averaging nearly 22 minutes a game. It's scary to think the step he's going to take after this year. But when you look at the depth or lack thereof down the middle for the Philadelphia Flyers, if you're the Senators, if if I'm DJ Smith, I am matching up Tim Stutzla against Kevin Hayes as often as possible, beat him with foot speed in the middle of the ice, and just absolutely torch him off the rush. That's, that's my plan if I was DJ Smith tonight, trying to get that top line free and then match up Noah Cates with uh, Shane Pinto's line there, kind of do it like that. But I'm, I think we're going to have a big game coming. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a three or four point night for Tim Stutzla. I love that. Yeah, I think this is going to be a very entertaining game. And there's no reason why the Ottawa Senators can't win this game, Ross. I'll transition that into my keys of victory, if you'll allow me. Um, because I mentioned the face-offs. That's an honorable mention key to victory. You guys know I'm a big face-off guy, so I wanted to highlight that. But, dude, the Philadelphia Flyers, they're 30th in face-offs. Their special teams are so unspecial. They're ordinary teams, I'm going to call them, Ross. They are 32nd out of 32nd in the NHL and power play percentage at 15.4%. Then maybe you're thinking, okay, the power play is not clicking. The PK can't be that bad, right? They are 26th in the league in penalty killing at 74.9%. So when you do that uh, combining the power play with the the PK and you want to hit 100%, remember uh, the DJ Smith talked about that? They wanted to be at what? 109 or something 110 yeah the philadelphia flyers uh are at 90.3 percent when you add their power play to their penalty killing so it's just been terrible for them now i'm i'm sure they're better five on five but if you're the ottawa senators i've mentioned this almost every single game and it's worked out feast on the power play when they feast on the power play they dominate they feasted on a terrible pk in florida and i hope that they can do the same here up against the philadelphia flyers and ross you mentioned a big night for tim stutzla look out for a tim stutzla shorthanded point or goal he's had a lot of chances he's been really good offensive threat on the pk up against this flyers team that just can't get it done on the power play we could see Timmy Stutzla be a real, real problem for them. I would love to see a Tim Stutzla shorthanded attempt. Like You look at the Ottawa Senators tonight, and you look at what could be if they do manage to sneak out a win and if the out-of-town scoreboard goes their way. I know that's a couple things that have to go in the right direction. Like If Pittsburgh loses but Florida beats Montreal, the Panthers all of a sudden are in that final playoff spot in the West, but they'll also have one extra game played than the Ottawa Senators. So the the out-of-town scoreboard, I think, tonight is more crucial than it ever has been. And you're looking at, at what's going on here with the Ottawa Senators. You have to take care of your own. And my key to victory is don't be looking up 
at the 200 level where they show the out of town scores kind of moving around the screen. Okay. You can't do that. You need to just focus on what you're doing tonight and let the chips fall where they may keep, keep it one singular focus. You're a better team than the Philadelphia Flyers, even with the injuries that you have at all positions, you just have to go out there. And it's like we talked about with Columbus uh, in, in early March, like, this is a business-like win. Go out there. Just get it done. Don't worry about Brandon Lemieux unless you have a clean look at him. Obviously, you're going to finish strong. But save that for the third period. If you're up three, up four, then you can get in and have some fun. Make it a complete gong show for all I care. That guy's a complete brickhead. What? Wait, what does Brady think of Brandon Lemieux? I don't even know what he's thinking. He's just a complete brickhead. He's got nothing up there. Bad, bad guy, bad player. But what a joke he is. And you actually heard that Ron Hextall, or is it? No, Hextall's gone to, uh, it was Pittsburgh. Chuck Fletcher right before he, uh, Chuck Fletcher right before he uh, was fired, as if they let him do a final trade deadline. Apparently, he only wanted a pick for Zach McCowan, but LA's like, can you please take Brendan Lemieux? So Brady was right. He is just trying to hang on, hang around the league. So um, I just hope that that's not something that's dealt with in the first period. Like, this doesn't have to be a first, like, if it was uh, Travis Konechny, who isn't in the lineup, but like that level of player, sure, go at him. Get him off his game early, but just let Lemieux sleep. He's going to have five shifts a period. Who cares? So yeah, leave yeah. that for the third. That would be yeah. my And that's the thing. The trade-off of Brady and a fringe NHL player barely hanging on into his career is just not worth Brady Kachuk's time here. So if you're the Senators, like if, hey, if Casty or Watson or someone wants to take care of him, go for it. But – we cannot have Brady Kachuk constantly uh, trading off with scrubs of other teams here. Just, and I respect that he stands up for himself and he's one. Of, he's not one of those guys that's like, hey, I'm a captain. I'm making all this money. Uh, you're not worth my time, which is true. He backs it up, but he can't be doing it at the, the consistency that Brady's doing it. It's just, it's not sustainable. No, it really isn't. And, and you don't have to worry about that. Pillsy, any final thoughts on today's show? Final thoughts are you gave the ownership potential ownership groups that were in attendance in Florida a great show. Run it back and give the Remington group, Ryan Reynolds, the Nico Sparks group is in town as well, apparently. So give them another show and show them that when this team wins at home, there's a lot of excitement around the community. And that's a building that can be a lot of fun and has a lot of potential. Uh, so have a good show for the potential owners. That's my final thought. My final thought on Pillsy, we miss so many. There's actually so many Nashville Predator, Ottawa Senators. I feel like people oh, yeah? have already commented if they miss. So I'm just going to list off a few, and you can tell me your level of surprise that they play for the Nashville Predators. Active right now is Zach Sanford. Oh, yeah. yeah Shane sure. Knighty, the sheriff, Okay. Yep. played for the Nashville Predators and Ottawa Senators. Derek Grant, former center, fourth line center. Okay. You think that I'm just getting started with some wild throwback names here. Michael Delzato played 25 games for them. I totally forgot that. I miss Uncle Deli. What a guy. Merrick Svatos. Yep. Not only that, how about a Brandon Bachensky? Ooh, the mayor. How about, I've got two more here. Greg DeVries. Okay. And Mike Sillinger, who also played for every team in the NHL. Yeah, uh, yeah, Mike Sillinger, that makes sense. So there you go. There's there's a long list. And again, the reason why is because the Nashville Predators, we're cheering for them about as hard as you can cheer for an out-of-town team right now against the Pittsburgh Penguins. But then you look at it, and with Montreal having the ability to keep Florida on the outside looking in, that's almost equally as important as well. So lots of out-of-town scoreboard watching to do tonight. And if you all want it in one simple spot, Mm-hmm. Make sure you're following on Twitter at Send Central. You can also find the show locked on dot senators. But for today, we say goodbye for Brandon Pillar. I'm Ross Levitan. Guys, enjoy the NHL debut of the K Train, Tyler Clevin. And we will talk tonight in the postcast after a big game. Senators and Flyers. For Brandon Pillar, I'm Ross Levitan, and this has been the Locked On Senators Podcast. Your team every day. <laughs>